begins with bringing the cultures closer together. I'm at the Bangladesh house in Makati. I'm going to meet the ambassador. Hi! Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Mabuhai. So good to meet you. Good to meet you. Nice to meet you. Thank Welcome you so much. To oh, I'm so excited. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you for talking. The ambassador introduces me to some of their cultural symbols before we head to the kitchen to get a taste of common Bangladeshi street eats, starters, and desserts. I will show you a common street food. See? So it's almost like, um, you know, like a, a snacking, maybe when you have snacking, a, yeah. some drink. Usually okay. they take a steel or aluminum pot, and then we have here, it's called puffed rice. In Bangla, we call it muri. Then put some chana chur. And you know, it's a 50 cent street food, a little bit of fresh coriander chopped, mm -hmm. tomatoes. Mm -hmm. We take the, some juice of the calamansi mm -hmm. and mix it. Okay. You have to do it by hand. It's very cheap, very hot. Mm -hmm. And then they serve it in a cone made of paper. I like it. It's crunchy and puffy and spicy. So sometimes they add, add egg. Small, oh, really? Small. Sometimes they add uh, minced beef means chicken. And then what else do we have here? That looks like a very popular street food too. We say fuchka, but in India they say pani puri. Pani puri, okay. And this one is, what's this? Uh, peas. Sauce, peas. It's a tomato, cucumber, egg, potato, boiled potato, you know? Uh-huh. Potato boil. Okay. Make it you have to eat one at. You eat one, you cannot keep your mouth empty because then you feel the hot. Mm. of the chili. So you take another one and keep on eating for some time. It's good. I like it because it's um, crispy mm -hmm. and then the, what is this? Uh, the texture is soft. Yeah. And then what else do we have? I see another one I recognize. Shinga. Shinga. And okay, what's inside? Uh, inside potato. It looks the same. Is there any difference between the one that they serve in uh, mm, India? Is it pretty really. similar? No. Pretty similar. Yeah. The, our is more like uh, Conical, there is more like triangle flat. Mm -hmm. mm. Yes, you can taste the um, turmeric. You actually have uh, some of the spices Spice. that are common in your culture. Yeah. That is cardamom, cinnamon, mm -hmm. clove, cumin, especially for the meat, beef, this type of uh, curry we use. Also the chili powder. And I know that these are desserts, sure. right? Yeah. So exactly. tell us about these ones. This one is say halwa. Yeah. Halwa. That is from egg, sugar, and milk. Okay. Put together, then we cook. This one looks familiar with the pistachios on top. Actually, this is a rice pudding. Mm -hmm. yeah. It is um, a rice, the special rice from Bangladesh. We say it's chini gula. That's the nut name. This is a very ah. indigenous rice from Bangladesh. Small grain. It has fragments and it is usually used. Uh, for festivals. By the way, we are also a rice eating nation, like you. Yes. So, <laughs> so we don't eat every day. If there is a party or if there is something to celebrate, then this is cooked. For anyone of us that have not had Bangladeshi food, um, how would you explain it to people? Like, what are the flavors and the types of okay. dishes? Generally, it's a spicy. Mm -hmm. We do use a lot of oil. We do frying more. Mm -hmm. And um, basically, it's always have a gravy. Mm -hmm. and so like it's a, curry. a curry. It's a curry. Yeah. We have more than 700 rivers. So basic food for us is uh, rice and fish. Perfect. Okay, so I'm excited. We're going to go to the dining room now and uh, try all the dishes you guys prepared. Okay, let's go. Come on. Bangladeshi main courses await us at the dining table, like this melt-in-your-mouth freshwater fish curry with a hint of sweetness. Beef buna, a dry curry that looks like Filipino caldereta but is made with ginger, onion, and garlic rather than tomatoes. Chicken rizala or chicken curry korma, a yogurt-based gravy. Okra and pickled mangoes, vegetables to balance all the protein. 
and of course, plenty of rice, and a greeting of gratitude. Say it again, Bismillah. 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 Okay, there you go. In the name of Appreciate God for providing. For providing, okay. I note the meal is not as spicy as I would expect. But that's because my hosts toned down the heat. Is it very spicy for you? No, actually, I was going to say you were very kind to me, <laughs> Farhana. I said, where's the side of chili? <laughs> Maybe you should have someone cut up some chilies. Chili, but chili. <laughs> That's OK. It's Everything is delicious and full of flavor and spices. As I learn more about Bangladeshi culture, I discover the country has a lot in common with the Philippines. Heat, the tropical summer, the intense monsoon, and eating fish, eating uh, rice, and uh, the fun-loving people. Everything is common, both between Philippines and Bangladesh. Well, and the other thing too is the communities are rather small in each of the countries, yes. right? I mean, yes. you said a thousand here and a thousand over there. Um, I guess, how can we encourage more travel? Is there, is there a lot of travel being done? Or? Not really, not mm -hmm. really. What would you like uh, people the, to know about the Bangladeshi culture? We are, a very, as I said, very hospitable people like the Filipinos mm -hmm. as well. The reason that uh, people don't know each other one of the reasons is that we don't have a direct flight. And it is possible because both Philippines and Bangladesh have a large diaspora in Australia. Mm. So even the traffic between Manila and Dhaka may not be high. If Dhaka, Manila, Sydney are connected, then the flights will be full. Both countries have the challenges of development, mm. challenges of poverty, the challenges of terrorism. Both countries are frontline country in terms of climate change effect. Mm. So internationally and bilaterally, we are uh, learning from each other. So we learn how you manage, uh, say, post-disaster rehabilitation from you. Mm -hmm. You learn from us how we manage pre-warning, pre-disaster warning. So there are a lot of uh, possibilities in terms of cooperation in the sector of developments and uh, uplifting people's lives. And of course, you know, I did want to mention the uh, Rohingya crisis because everyone is suddenly watching what's happening between Bangladesh mm -hmm. and Myanmar. Yeah. And Bangladesh, of course, having to deal with this influx of refugees. Yeah. Can the Philippines do to kind of assist in this in, type of crisis? In, in fact, Philippines, uh, during the chairmanship, they did assist to make some sort of awareness within the ASEAN. Mm -hmm. And you see, my country is a very crowded country. We are smaller than the Philippines, and we have a bigger population than the Philippines. Mm -hmm. On top of that, we have some one million disparate people uh, fleeing from Myanmar. So it's, a, it's an additional um, stress on already the limited resources and capacity we have. Mm -hmm. But we have still welcomed them in the sense that the scale of atrocity is such, I believe that any responsible, responsive country would have welcomed them anyway. Mm -hmm. This is not a permanent solution that they would leave eternally in Bangladesh. Mm -hmm. so they have to go back sometime. For that, we have to create a situation back in their motherland, in Myanmar, in Rakhine, whether they are encouraged to go back, for them to have all the basic rights that other Myanmar citizens have. Mm -hmm. Philippines can help that. Why? Because Philippines also have this minority problem in Mindanao. Mm. And they handled it very well, despite uh, there were violence. Never, never for a single month, the political discourse, the political dis discussion between the government, between Manila and the uh, minorities was put on hold. Mm -hmm. Still the president, your president is thinking to bring in federalism, to bring in Bangsamoro law, to inc incorporate them into the mainstream of development, mainstream of nation building. Mm -hmm. Obviously going back to uh, the relationship between 
Bangladesh and the Philippines. What, what's right now the situation of the trade between trade the two countries? Trade is not much, not much. One reason is you are very close to China. Mm -hmm. So most of the things coming from China mm -hmm. and there is a psychological distance between the two countries. But as you said, in agriculture there are a lot of cooperation going on. Recently in private sector, Bangladesh is taking hybrid seed mm -hmm. from uh, Philippines because its yield per hectare is higher than that of the kind of hybrid seed, rice seed we have. Mm -hmm. We are also planning to learning uh, coconut processing, cocoa processing from you. Okay. And we are also looking for the technology from Philippines for deep sea fishing. Now that we have settled our maritime boundary with India and Myanmar, the blue ocean has opened up for us. But we don't have the capacity to go deep in this ocean to catch fish, process them on board and bring them back. We can offer you uh, world-class um, uh, pharmaceuticals, far, far relatively cheaper price than here. Then also we can offer you uh, clothing, textiles. Oh yeah, a huge industry there. A huge industry there. I noticed the beautiful garments you have, where they yeah. made in uh, Bangladesh. Bangladesh. Yeah. yeah. They do have this um, almost um, Mindanao feel. Uh, the, these, this, uh, yes. the, design, the design. The design, design. yeah. Um, but the, the history and the tradition of the crafts too. is very strong in Bangladesh mm -hmm. also. Every big brands that you see in Manila High Street, like Jara, yes. Gap, <clears throat> Marks and Spencer, we produce them. Yeah, that comes from Bangladesh. <laughs> but in a trans through a transit maybe from the US or somewhere else. Maybe I should just go to Bangladesh and buy my clothes straight from the yeah, factory. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, <laughs> <laughs> like, like, like brands like that, you, your own brands like Bench mm. and other similar brands. So they're already doing them, they're already making They, they might in. explore the possibility. I did want to mention, you know, a lot of people uh, were talking about the big conflict regarding RCBC and the <laughs> Bangladesh Bank. Yes, because of course, you know, that caused a little bit of friction between the two countries, you know, the money laundering, um, $81 million from the central bank in Bangladesh uh, and then funneled to casinos here through yes. the RCBC. I, I know that the RCBC has done that's paid its fine. Um, has it moved forward? I will not say that it's moving forward very fast. Mm. And sometimes there are uh, some sad moments of frustration as well. I know only 15 million, I think, also, was recovered. Uh, only 15 million out of 81 million. Yes. Yeah. And what uh, AMLC AMLOC and Department of Justice here are doing, they are basically uh, trying to recover the money through civil forfeiture cases and trying whoever possible, uh, whoever responsible at this end through criminal cases. Uh, only one criminal case has been so far filed. I know. Uh, I just can't uh, Very recently, it. and few of the suspects are dropped as well from the list. So we are in discussion with DOJ and other responsible organizations to find out what actually happening, one, and how to fast forward the process. And I can tell you that I receive when I meet the political leaders, senior officials, I receive full support and assurances. Mm -hmm. And we from uh, Bangladesh, uh, also our bank, the Central Bank, Bangladesh Bank, depend on the goodwill of Filipino government and colleagues here. My priority here is to uh, bring the two countries psychologically closer first. If this Psychological distance could be reduced. Rest of the things like investment, trade, uh, cultural linkages will automatically happen. Mm -hmm. So, one way is to do that is that to bring cultural and cuisine and other mm -hmm. things from Philippines to Bangladesh, and also 
bringing Bangladeshi cultural troops, uh, paintings and others mm -hmm. to Philippines. And Philippines also a attending Bangladeshi different festive, cultural mm -hmm. festivals. This was a very delicious meal. Uh, I learned so much about Bangladeshi culture and the relations between our countries. Thank you so much for inviting us to your home. They taught me this phrase, and I hope I don't mess it up, it's Abar Deka Hove. Yes. Did I say See that correctly? Okay. See you again. Thank you so much, you guys. Yeah.